name is St. John's, and welcome to our fifth Wednesday in Lent. And thanks for uh, checking in. So so good that we can connect this way when we can't be together in person. Um, so tonight, if, if anybody has uh, Bibles out at home, open up to John 10, because that's where our reading is going to be from tonight. We are in the I Am Sayings of Jesus, and tonight we're especially on I Am the Good Shepherd. Also, uh, a little bit of I Am the Door is in that chapter 10 of John. So uh, that's where we'll go with our scripture readings. And um, then we're going we're gonna to finish with a beautiful song litany. And uh, I also posted on Facebook today, so you can look at these later, um, a song for kids for tonight, a great Marty Halkin hymn to go with this scripture and also the Holy Evening Prayer of Worship, if you'd like to follow that online. That's just a wonderful way to do our, our beloved service, even though we can't do it together. And a special thanks to Jenny and Scott Trick, our techies, for making this possible tonight. And Beth is going to be the voice you hear uh, in the litany with me, so thank you, Beth. And thank you, Josie, for being our audience tonight. We're glad you're here. We gather in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. O Lord, our shepherding God, come close to us now. Come near to us in our time of need. Shepherding God, we need you in our time of anxiety. We need you in a time of globe-trotting disease. We need you in a time of economic uncertainty. We need you to bind our wounds and pour your healing ointment on our heads. We need the briars and brambles and burrs pulled out of our fleece and skin. Shepherding God, you guide us with your voice. Help us to listen and follow no matter where your voice leads. Help us to trust you. Shepherding God, thank you for your son who lays down his life for those who follow him and for those who are not yet in the fold. Amen. Let's worship God together. So here's the reading from John chapter 10. Very truly I tell you, anyone who does not enter the sheepfold by the gate, but climbs in by another way is a thief and a bandit. The one who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him, and the sheep hear his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all of his own, he goes ahead of them, and the sheep follow him because they know his voice. They will not follow a stranger, but they will run from him because they do not know the voice of strangers. Jesus used this figure of speech with them, but they did not understand what he was saying to them. So again, Jesus said to them, Very truly I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who came before me are thieves and bandits, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters by me will be saved and will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand, who is not the shepherd and does not own the sheep, sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and runs away. And the wolf snatches them and scatters them. The hired hand runs away because a hired hand does not care for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my own, and my own know me, just as the Father knows me, and I know the Father. And I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that do not belong to this fold. I must bring them also, and they will listen to my voice. So there will be one flock, one shepherd. For this reason the Father loves me, because I lay down my life in order to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have power to lay it down, and I have power to take it up again. I have received this command from my Father. 
the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So if there's any kids tuned in tonight, this is a great song that we learned at camp some years ago. And it's the song, the refrain is, uh, I just want to be a sheep, ba, 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 ba. I just want to be a sheep, ba, 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 ba. And I pray the Lord my soul to keep. I just want to be a sheep, ba, 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 ba. That's, that's how it goes, and you can, you can use your sheep ears and make the ba-ba-ba sound, okay? And there's a version of this on YouTube that's much better than this one, but here we go. So here's, here's a verse, and you kind of sing back the, the question to me, okay? I don't want to be a Pharisee. A Pharisee? I don't want to be a Pharisee. A Pharisee? Because there are no Pharisees. Yeah, you can grow one, that's okay. Oh, I don't want to be a Pharisee. Then, what do you want to be? I just want to be a sheep, ba, 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 ba. I just want to be a sheep, ba, 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 ba. And I pray for Lord, my soul to keep. I just want to be a sheep, ba, 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 ba. We'll do one more verse. I don't want to be a Sadducee. I don't want to be a Sadducee. A Sadducee? Because they're so sad to see. I don't want to be a Sadducee. What do you want to be? I just want to be a sheep. Ba, 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 ba. I just want to be a sheep. Ba, 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 ba. And I pray the Lord my soul to keep. I just want to be a sheep. Ba, 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 ba. So, kids at home, learn that song and have fun singing it. And I'm also going to invite you to think about what we got all this time at home. We got extra time to read in our Bibles, extra time to do uh, Bible stories on YouTube. Um, maybe you could learn the 23rd Psalm. We'll use that tonight before we're done. Praise to you and peace from Jesus, the Good Shepherd. Amen. Any day is a good day to ponder these I am sayings of Jesus and to, to wonder what they mean. And I think this quarantine time is an especially good time to hear these words of Jesus, to think about them deeply, and to ask ourselves, well, what does this mean? And we have a little more quiet time now to do just that. So, so first, um, for a bit of background, the Bible uses the images of, of sheep and shepherds a whole lot throughout Scripture. And one of the, uh, the truths about people living at that time, of course, is lots of people raised sheep. There were lots of sheep and shepherds everywhere you went. So it would be a very simple thing for people to relate to. It's also worth remembering how important that sheep were to the the life of faith of the Jewish people. So it's the life of that Passover lamb that is offered up. It's the blood of that lamb that's put on the, the doorpost of the house on the night of Passover when God is going to start bringing the Israelites with the help of Moses out of Egypt and out of slavery. And then I'm, I'm not a blood and guts person, but you also need to know that that uh, many, many, many lambs became sacrificial offerings in worship, uh, first in the tabernacle and then at the temple in Jerusalem. And let's just say the, the Jewish practice to seek and to celebrate forgiveness depended on the life of these lambs that were sacrificed. And the every year festival of Passover um, could not have existed without a plentiful supply of lambs. Uh, the other way scripture uses the image of sheep and shepherds is the, the shepherd part to indicate that the ordinary population are people like sheep and the kings who are supposed to be watching over them are to be shepherds. That's their job. They are to take good care 
of the people entrusted to them. And unfortunately, when we read about most of the kings of Israel, we find out that they weren't very good shepherds. And we hear God pronouncing judgment on these poor shepherds, on these evil rulers who have not taken care of the sheep and who, in fact, have uh, scattered God's people. And we hear this word of judgment, we hear it in Jeremiah 23, as a word of hope for the people who are in exile, where God says, I will, I will gather my sheep, I will bring them back, and God will raise up shepherds who will really shepherd them, so that the sheep shall not be afraid or dismayed any longer, and so that none will be missing. That's Jeremiah 23. And then in Ezekiel 34, this gets stepped up a notch. The judgment upon the poor leaders who have done a terrible job of caring for God's people will be harsh. And then God says this, I myself will search for my sheep. I myself will seek them out. I will rescue them. I will feed them in good pastures. I myself will be the shepherd of the sheep. I will seek the lost, bring back the strayed, bind up the injured, and strengthen the weak. And that powerful picture of God as the shepherd of the people, you know, Ezekiel might have been inspired by the beautiful words of Psalm 23, our favorite psalm with all those beautiful images of God leading us, God providing for us, and us being with God. Even people who don't know much about the Bible or don't consider themselves Jewish or Christian, even, even ordinary folks have heard those words. So by the way, these are the scriptures that Jesus would have grown up with. These are the images that would have been planted in his heart and in his mind. These are the images of God that he would have carried through life. And in Luke, Jesus picks up on this image and tells of the story of the man who has a hundred sheep, one of them gets lost, he leaves those 99, he searches high and low until he finds that one, and then he brings that one home rejoicing on his shoulders, and he celebrates. And Jesus tells us that God is like that dedicated shepherd. And so that brings us to the Gospel of John, where Jesus takes these images of sheep and shepherd to an entirely new level. And the context in John matters. In, in the previous chapter, we've, we've seen the healing of this man born blind. And this man not only has new vision, he has new faith. And as he's interrogated by the religious leaders like who did this? What do you say about him? You know, really, they don't really want to know what he says, but this man gives testimony to Jesus and testimony to his own growing faith, and for that, the religious leaders, guess what? They, they throw him out. They, they kick him out of the community. And that's where Jesus steps into that gulf and makes this claim that unlike these bad shepherds, unlike these hired hands who don't care for the sheep, I care. I am the gate for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. So Jesus welcomes that guy in, and then he goes on to say how he is the good shepherd. And so to say that Jesus is the good shepherd is not only to fulfill fill the promises that God made in the Old Testament, John is pretty much telling us in, in no uncertain terms that Jesus is God, that Jesus is acting like God, that Jesus is one with God, and that Jesus cares for people exactly the way God cares for people. And the gate image is probably to say also that, that he's the way, the way to life. He's also the way to safety, but he's the way to life. The gate swings both ways. You come in, you go out. We come in to Jesus, 
who claim to be the light of the world and the bread of life and living water and all these other wonderful claims. And we find the way to life with God. And we find the way out to serve in God's world. So that's a pile of beautiful images and metaphors. So to unpack them a little bit, let's, let's ask, what, what do we think Jesus means? So, so first think of this. If Jesus is the good shepherd, then we are the sheep. Kind of fits, huh? And I'm not sure everyone appreciates being referred to as sheep, especially if you're inclined to presume that sheep are maybe smelly, maybe not so bright, maybe prone to getting lost, maybe vulnerable. We might not want to think of ourselves that way. Uh, but if you know that sheep are actually kind of smart, very useful, um, good memories, scientists tell us, they stick together most of the time, then maybe that's a, a good image. It's, it's a humbling image to be a sheep, but it's a beautiful thing to see the relationship being offered between sheep and shepherd. I know my own, Jesus says, my own know me, they listen to my voice, they follow me, I give them eternal life. Remember that, we're the sheep. Second thing in this reading from John 10 is that Jesus says five times in nine verses, I lay down my life for the sheep. I lay down my life, something that he says a hired hand wouldn't necessarily do, but something that Jesus is altogether willing to do. And the whole point of John's gospel is to get us to see how Jesus lays down his life on the cross to gain life for us. The good shepherd lays down his life so that we can have life. Third thing is this, something we dare not miss. Uh, again, in chapter 10, Jesus is talking about he knows the sheep, they listen, they follow. He says, I have other sheep who are not of this fold. And I must gather them also. So there will be one flock, one shepherd. There's a saying that reminds us that Jesus, the great I am, is so much bigger than you and me, so much bigger than John's little community of persecuted Christians. And it reminds us that God's plans are so much bigger than those of any church any denomination, uh, maybe even any religion. In John's gospel, this, this dream of Jesus becomes his prayer in chapter 17, when he prays his heart out to the Father that all his followers might be united as one. Jesus is, has the job of gathering all the world to God's side. One more thing, at the end of John's gospel, the last appearance of Jesus after his resurrection is where Jesus asked Peter, Simon Peter, do you love me? Peter, that also human disciple, Simon, do you love me? Simon Peter says, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus says, feed my sheep, tend my sheep. Which brings us to an evening of quarantine in our own homes where most of us, thankfully, are safe and sound and where we're not at all sure how homeless people are going to fare through this ordeal or really sick people, how they're going to do, or lonely people, how are they going to do, or refugees, or those in prison, how are those folks going to do when this ordeal really uh, unfolds, I would say that we all need a good shepherd, each and every one of us. I'm pretty sure I hear Jesus giving us the command also, tend my sheep, feed my sheep. Let's hold all those vulnerable sheep in prayer in these weeks. And I wonder if you'd pray Psalm 23 with me as, as our closing prayer. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not be in want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. 
He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You spread a table before me in the presence of those who trouble me. You've anointed my head with oil. My cup runs over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. May it be so. A, lit a litany is a sung prayer, and we have not used this one out of the Green Book in a while. Um, but it's, it's like the whole prayer of the church wrapped in song. And so I'm going to ask you at home, you folks at home, to, um, to just sing this Lord have mercy part. And I chose this for tonight because I, I really do think with all those vulnerable people out there with the COVID-19 virus wreaking havoc, um, we really do need to ask for God's mercy because as we've seen already, our, our efforts are not enough. Um, if our healthcare workers don't even have all the personal protection equipment they need, our efforts are not enough. Science is good, right now it's not enough. The safety net is there, maybe not enough. Um, so I think our, our prayer these weeks is, is always including the words, Lord have mercy. That is really what the world needs, God's mercy for every person. So here's how your part goes. Lord have mercy. Got that? Let us pray to the Lord, have mercy. 
comfort and defend us, gracious Lord. Rejoicing in the fellowship of all the saints, let us commend ourselves, one another, and our whole life to Christ our Lord. To us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. The Almighty and merciful Lord, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, bless and preserve us. Amen. Stay home in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. If there's any confirmation students watching, now is the time to go to Zoom and check in with your confirmation leaders, and that'll be uh, some sacred time to gather and connect. So uh, thank you leaders for doing that, and um, thank you guys, uh, thank you students for participating, and thank you God and brilliant people for Zoom. Thanks Jenny and Scott. We'll see you Sunday morning at 9.45. God bless.